With kids back in school, education funding and strategies may be top of mind for many parents, especially if you just made a hefty tuition payment. There are too many education strategies to discuss in this episode, so I'll be focusing on one investment vehicle in particular, the 529. I'll share what they are, how they can be used, and the benefits and drawbacks. Importantly, there is a significant change now in effect regarding how excess 529 funds can be used. If you have an existing 529, listen up as this may apply to you. Let's get to it. First, let's hit the key points. What is a 529? It's a tax advantaged account designed specifically for education expenses. The account is funded with after-tax dollars and the assets grow tax deferred and can be withdrawn tax free for qualified educational expenses. And who can open one? Anyone. 529s are typically opened by a parent or grandparent with their child or grandchild as the beneficiary. Minors cannot be the owner, but there is no age limit for the beneficiary or time limit on when the funds can be withdrawn. Even better, anyone can contribute to a 529. We often see both parents and grandparents make contributions. 529s are state-sponsored, so there may be additional tax incentives for those that contribute to their state's plan. For example, Indiana taxpayers can receive an Indiana tax credit of 20% of contributions, up to $1,500, to an Indiana 529 account. How much can you contribute? Individuals can invest up to $18,000 or $36,000 for married couples per beneficiary without assuming any gift tax consequences for 2024. You can also contribute up to $90,000 per beneficiary in a single year or $180,000 for married couples and take advantage of five years worth of tax-free gifts at one time. Each state plan may have its own lifetime contribution limit. For example, Indiana's plan is capped at $450,000 for all accounts for the same beneficiary. And what is considered a qualified education expense? A lot. Tuition, fees, room and board costs, books, computers, supplies, equipment, etc. This can be for K-12 education, up to an annual max of $10,000, or unlimited for higher education, such as a traditional four-year college, two-year program, or vocational or trade school. What if the funds are withdrawn for non-qualified reasons? Well, it's not great. The principal can be taken without penalty, but all earnings are subject to a 10% penalty and federal income taxes. If deductions or credits were taken for contributions, states may claw back and recoup taxes on unused principal distributions. For this reason, many investors are weary of overfunding a 529 and not using it for qualified expenses. For example, if their child doesn't go to college or if they receive scholarships. Thankfully, there are some measures in place if the 529 is overfunded or goes unused. You can change the beneficiary at any time to one of the beneficiary's eligible relatives, such as siblings and step-siblings, parents, cousins, aunts, uncles, and in-laws, or you can roll it into the eligible relative's existing 529. Because of the ability to transfer funds within the family, many investors previously would open a single 529 with the intention of updating the beneficiary to another child or rolling to another child's 529. But there's a new financial planning opportunity that has emerged out of the SECURE Act 2.0 that might give you reason to pause when thinking about sharing a 529. A large concern I hear often from clients is that their child's education is fully funded through other means or scholarships, and there's a surplus in the 529 plan. Starting January of 2024, you can now strategically roll unused 529 funds into a Roth IRA for the beneficiary. There are, of course, some stipulations to be aware of. A rollover can only be made to a Roth IRA for the 529 beneficiary, not the owner. The 529 must have been opened at least 15 years before rolling funds into the Roth. Any contributions and earnings in the past five years are not rollover eligible, preventing immediate rollovers. Currently, the maximum lifetime amount that can be rolled to a Roth is $35,000 per beneficiary. There is no indexing for this value. And because this is per beneficiary, there is reason to consider opening a separate 529 for each intended person. 
For example, if you have three children you are planning education expenses for, each could be entitled to the $35,000 maximum rollover to a Roth versus only one being entitled to this amount if you opened one 529 with the intention of eventually updating the beneficiary to the other two children. This is further limited on an annual basis to the maximum IRA contribution limit. So for 2024, that's $7,000 for those under 50 and $8,000 for those over 50. The beneficiary must have earned income at least equal to the amount of the rollover. And you cannot double dip with a rollover and contributions. For example, if you make a full rollover of $7,000, you may not make a traditional or Roth IRA contribution. Or if you make a $3,000 contribution, you may only roll over 4,000 in that year to get to the $7,000 limit. There are a few other considerations to keep in mind here. One, ensure the timing aligns with your financial plan. Rollovers should ideally occur when your child's education needs are fully met or if you anticipate surplus funds. Two, be mindful of tax implications. While contributions to Roth IRAs are non-taxable upon withdrawal, earnings withdrawn before age 59 and a half may incur taxes and penalties unless certain conditions are met. Three alternative options exist. You can move the education funds to a new beneficiary, whether another child or grandchild, and you can also pull principal out penalty and tax-free and equitable amounts to scholarships received. Lastly, keep an eye on contribution limits and eligibility. Roth IRA contributions are subject to income limits, so consult with a financial advisor to ensure you're compliant. Now, should you bank on overfunding a 529 so that you can roll it to a Roth? Probably not. But it can be a great way to optimize surplus education savings while getting the benefit of a Roth. If you haven't watched my prior episode on Roth IRAs and why they can be a great long-term investing tool, I encourage you to check it out. Let's wrap this up. 529s can be an excellent saving strategy for education expenses with their tax-deferred growth and tax-free qualified withdrawals. Be cautious about overfunding and be aware of your options should there be any unused funds, whether that's by changing the beneficiary or rolling assets to a Roth. Have any questions on your specific education saving strategy? Let me know. Contact us at evansmay.com or via email at info at evansmay.com. Thanks for watching. I've said it before.